Hey, what's up? This is Reed. I'm about to add new automations to my smart home, which means it's time to buy sensors. I already had a lot that I've gathered over the years, but I wasn't sure if they were really the best. So I went on Amazon and bought any sensor with decent ratings that I didn't have already. I'm going to show you some of the different types of sensors from several brands and tons of ideas for how to use these along the way. Stick around to the end because I'll tell you my favorites of all these sensors. Let's start off first with contact sensors and the least expensive one I found from Linked. These come in a pack of two for about $24, so $12 each. It's a pretty decent price, but there are two major negatives. One, I had to jump through some hoops connecting it to SmartThings, and it's not a huge deal because it worked well after it was connected. The second is a large logo on the side. I don't know why they did this. It looks terrible. It is only the small part, so you could use a basic magnet instead of the ugly logo piece to blend in more. This is something not everyone knows. The small piece is just a magnet that you can swap out. I can put the magnet on the bottom of my media cabinet door to trigger the sensor. That way I can automatically turn on some light strips when I open the door with a cheap sensor. Another good option is the contact sensor from Akara. This one is smaller and way better looking than the first sensor. I could put this anywhere and it would look fine because it's so small. Like on top of my refrigerator to be notified if it got left open. The refrigerator door is open. I am pretty sure it was Luna. The Akara sensor is not expensive, but it's not as cheap as the previous ones. And you will have to jump through some hoops connecting it to SmartThings, so keep that in mind. Ecolink is up next, and this one does connect to SmartThings without any hassle. It also does not have any logos on it, which I like. There's even a temperature sensor built inside, but don't get your hopes up because that part is not very accurate. This sensor looks good on a door, which you could use if toddlers were getting out of bed when they shouldn't. But there's something to watch out for. Normally, contact sensors are pretty quick to communicate if they are open or closed. That way, smart lights can be turned on right when the door sensor opens which is usually faster than a motion sensor. But this Ecolink has about a second delay after opening or closing, which is disappointing. So I'm not sure if I would put this on a door for that reason. If you already have Ring sensors installed from their security system, you can also use them in your automations. I have Amazon routines triggered by Ring contact sensors and it works great. To take it a step further, I even have it toggle a SmartThings virtual switch as an easy way to use these sensors with my SmartThings hub. This helps me run more automations like notifying me if I haven't gone out the side door to wheel out the trash, or automatically turn on the porch lights if I open an exterior door late at night. I also like that it has two coin cell batteries, so they will need to be replaced less often. As you might know, SmartThings stopped selling their multi-purpose sensor, which is basically a contact sensor on steroids. It can monitor temperature, vibration, and has an accelerometer for movement. Aotech is supposed to make the same sensor under their brand, and hopefully it comes out soon because there's a lot it can do. The temperature sensor is accurate enough to automate your smart thermostat, you can use a vibration sensor to run automations when someone is knocking on the door, or use the accelerometer to trigger automations when the device is moving, like a garage door opening. The magnet on the sensor is also very strong. It can be further apart than all the other sensors, and the status will still be closed, which gives it more flexibility when installing it. Now let's move on to motion sensors, which has even more variation between them, and some of these have a lot of sensors in one, opening the door to way more automations. Starting off first with the IKEA motion sensor. This thing is dirt cheap at $10 and can connect directly with the SmartThings hub. The biggest problem with this motion sensor is the three minute cooldown. That means once it detects motion, you have to wait three more minutes until it can detect motion again. But it might not be as big of a deal as you may think. Let's say you normally have the motion sensor turn off the lights when no one is in the room. I usually wait five minutes with no motion before I turn off the lights, which will always be longer than the cooldown time anyways. Sonoff also connects easily to SmartThings and is a small motion sensor. I'm not a huge fan of how it looks, kind of like a lizard eyeball sticking out or something. It works well and has a one minute cooldown, so it's a decent option if you want a small motion sensor that works with SmartThings. This could be good for hiding it out of sight and having it automatically open up your smart shades. 
Uh, maybe it's too small and now I can't find it in this messy toy room. Now those two motion sensors just mentioned can only detect motion. They don't have any extra functionality and that's why they cost less, which might be fine for you if you just wanna turn the lights on or off for motion, run a routine when you walk into the room, or be alerted if someone breaks into your house. The rest of the motion sensors are going to cost more, but have extra features that could be useful. Like this SmartThings motion sensor has a temperature sensor built in. That way you could automatically turn on a fan if you walk into the room when the temperature is warm. It's a good motion sensor, but I'm gonna focus on the others that you can actually buy right now because these aren't in stock, like I mentioned earlier. But you can get this motion sensor from Philips Hue. It can detect temperature and light as well. The light sensor lets you run automations to turn on the lights when it's cloudy outside because it can sense that it's dark in the room or when it's bright. Oh wow, the room got brighter when you walked in. Thank you. Actually, your phone flashlight's on. What? Ugh. Oh. There's a few things I really like about this sensor. It uses two AAA batteries that can easily last two or three years. Seriously, the battery life on these things are amazing. What's even more impressive is the cooldown time is only 15 seconds. You can use the magnet to attach it to a refrigerator or metal surface. Plus, you can simply set it flat on a shelf. Seems basic, but not all sensors can do this, unfortunately. Also, the temperature and light sensors are very accurate and it can connect to almost any smart home platform out there using the Hue Bridge, or directly with SmartThings because it uses Zigbee. And I really like this Hue sensor, but these next sensors have even more bells and whistles. Like this one that plugs directly into an outlet so you don't have to worry about batteries. It's the HomeSeer HSM200, which can connect directly with SmartThings and work surprisingly well. This detects motion, light, and temperature. It also has a status LED that can change colors. What's cool is that you can use the Smart Light app in SmartThings to change the color of the light in automations. For example, you can turn the color red if the garage door was left open. The light detection and motion sensor are quick and accurate, with a one minute cooldown time on the motion. The temperature reports often, but was slightly off. You can adjust it in the settings so it solved that problem. This could be a great option to plug it in a hallway to turn on the lights or notify you when you walk by. Or the kitchen is a great spot since you can plug it in on the side of an island or above the countertop to not take up space and still see alerts from the LED light. The last sensor is from AOTech and it has six sensors packed in. There are motion, humidity, temperature, light, UV, and vibration sensors. This seems like a lot, but a couple of them are not very useful. I pointed the sensor outside and the UV index never changed, so I'm not sure if that even works. I mean, it's Arizona, so yeah, it's pretty bright out there. The vibration sensor can detect when it's been tampered with, but I don't know when I would need that. On second thought, the motion sensor is very accurate though, and you can change the cooldown time and motion sensitivity, which is all great. The temperature, humidity, and light detection all seem to be fairly accurate. So you could automatically turn on a bathroom fan if the humidity gets too high. Plus, you can either use batteries or plug it in for power, which I'm a huge fan of. Put it on a dresser and hide the cord behind and never worry about batteries again. Before I get to my favorites, there were a few motion sensors that I would probably skip. Let me quickly mention those. This one from Ags Home is just way too big and ugly to put on a shelf. It looks small on Amazon, but don't be deceived. I really like Wise Sense for the price, but they became too unreliable, disconnecting all the time. Also, the sensors can be ruined if the battery runs out. I mentioned Linked earlier for their contact sensor. This motion sensor is also a hassle to set up in SmartThings, and the price doesn't make up for it. Up next is a 4-in-1 sensor from Innovelli with motion, light, humidity, and temperature detection. I really wanted to like this sensor since you can use a battery or plug it in for power. The motion range is very limited. It could only detect me when I was about five feet in front of it. And you can adjust the sensitivity in the settings, but when I did that, the motion detection just stopped working altogether for me. Zeus also has a 4-in-1 sensor and the motion detection was much better than Innovelli's. But its other sensors weren't accurate or reliable, probably since it only runs on battery. Zeus did recently release a new version that can be plugged in for power. That might help, but I haven't been able to test it out yet. 
All right, now to my favorites and what I would buy again after testing all of them. And everything will be linked down in the description. First, contact sensors. All of my exterior doors and many of my windows will have the ring contact sensors. I just bought more because I like them so much for their reliability and long battery life. I can use them for both security and automation, so it's perfect. For indoors, I really like the SmartThings multi-purpose sensor, but who knows when it will be available through AOTech and how much it will cost. So I would buy the Acara contact sensors. They are small, so they blend in better and seem to work great. If the extra steps for adding it into SmartThings sounds too difficult, I would go with Ecolink. As for motion sensors, the price is going to be the biggest factor. If I'm on a tight budget or if I'm going to put a motion sensor in a room with less foot traffic, then the IKEA sensor all the way. As long as it's in an area that I don't use often, the cooldown time won't bother me. My favorite all-around motion sensor is from Philips Hue. It's very reliable and accurate. It does cost more than the basic motion sensor, but it's light and temperature sensors, battery life, compatibility, and fast cooldown time are all worth it in my opinion. My next favorite is the one from Homeseer. I love that it just plugs in so it's out of the way and you don't have to worry about batteries. The RGB light is also a nice bonus. It is expensive, so I wouldn't put it in every room, but for some spots, it makes a lot of sense. And if you want something that works directly with SmartThings, AOTech 6 sensor isn't a bad option. Before I go, I want to give you an important tip about sensors. I've seen people say their sensors run out of battery quickly or lose connection often, and this could be due to a poor signal to the hub. In SmartThings, you can log in with the browser and view the signal strength to your sensors. If they are low, then get a repeater in between the sensor and the hub. These are usually built into smart outlets and they can help with reliability and battery life. Hopefully you found this video helpful and were able to find sensors and ideas that work best for you. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Whoa. What? That's hot. Yeah, thanks, I just shaved. What? No, 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 no. The temperature sensor, it's really hot in here. Oh yeah, of course, I thought you were talking about. Yeah.